This episode of the T4 Show is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All streamed directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com forward slash GFQ. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the T4 Show, episode number 153 for August 7th. 2013. My name is Michael Mana at Michael Mana on Twitter, and I'm here with the entire gang on video, one person on audio, uh, starting with my co host and best friend in the world, Colm at Culmination and at Homeowner Colm, too. Did I get that right? Yeah, apparently, apparently. Yes, it's great to be here, Michael. I love these Wednesdays. These are the days when I, I look at the show notes and I see, uh oh, we have to talk about the Vita and the 3DS. I better get out the chargers. Yeah, uh, hopefully you successfully updated both of them because I still am trying to update my PS Vita. Uh, I do not own a 3DS. We're going to cover both those updates today. Also cover a lot of other stuff. And we're going to have a little bit different of a presentation courtesy of Suncast, at Suncast yes. with a K on Twitter. And uh, hit us with one of those shots, buddy. See what we got going. There you go. For the you benefit want, uh, of the, the video blocks. audience. There you are. Look at you, you giant. Jack and a giant slayer. Look at that. There's Colm. We're the same size. Is that a great, uh, that's one of your favorite movies of the year, Jack and the Giant joined by Joined by 12-foot, 9,000-pound Suncast. Hey, they do it again. I want to see that. <laughs> you want me in the bigger box? I and don't you in the me. smaller box? I, I, look like a, I look like a Skittle next to you. Look at that. <laughs> what did you do? What is that camera angle? That's <laughs> the like same one right there. I think, yeah, but in the box, I think he used desktop presenter to really zoom it up. Usually, we're using yeah. Wirecast this week rather than Vid Blaster. So, uh, the, if you notice the the split boxes and stuff like that, it's, it's similar to what Coleman and I did before we decided to give Andrew Zarian, who's the big voice in the sky, is he still there? Can we hear him? No, he no, went. he left. All right, he well, he we went back to his drinking. Went back to his drinking. Went back to his drinking chair in the bedroom. I don't know why you would need a drinking chair in the bedroom, but um, you know, long time ago we decided to stop using Wirecast and let Andrew and Suncast take over the uh, the uh, headache of uh, dealing with all the different entry. We don't even know, Colm, what the interest, the, all these little intricate. I can't even say the word. Uh, all these little details of yeah. what it goes into a production. We used Wirecast. We got very lucky, I think, for about a year, and then it started to crash around us. But, uh, you know, it's good to just kind of put the show notes together and just sit back and, and talk about stuff. Yes, I agree. It is uh, great, and especially this time of year during the summer when, I mean, it's sort of like the end of year, you get a lot of tech and gaming type stuff and the beginning of the year, and in the middle, it's sort of like... Whew. That's where our updated reviews come in, uh, Pretty damn handy, right? Yeah. So we're gonna, we're gonna actually gonna start off with one updated review, and a lot of people were asking. Uh, we've been on quite the uh, the uh, roll with these home automation uh, products, especially the Wemos. The the Belkin Wemo products are really really good. I, I don't have too much to report about what we've talked about with the motion control, right? And also when you plug the appliances in. Now I got the newest product, which is the light switch, and this was a a huge project for me because it required, first of all, making sure that the right electricity was shut off, uh, which right. I lucked out and did. Danger. And, and I learned a few things. Now, I learned the difference <laughs> between, I have a light right here off camera that I thought was a three-way light, meaning uh, dim, medium, and then bright. That's what I thought a three-way switch was. I was terribly wrong. A three-way switch is much like where I plan to put the Wemo light switch, Colm and Suncast, in my stairwell where there's two light switches, one at the bottom of the stairs and one at the top. Uh, the, the thing, it works. The installation was not such a big deal, about maybe 15, 20 minutes at the most, taking my time oh, and nice. making sure I, I got the, the wires right. Belkin was very good with the instruction video, so that I can't say there was anything wrong with that. But then I found out after the fact that this is a three-way switch, and I need to have uh, the bottom light switch in the down position for the Wemo light switch to be able to be turned on either manually with the switch or remotely with an iPhone or an Android device. Uh, you know, I don't know if I'm going to keep it there, but for what it is, if you have it and it's not a three-way switch, it works seamlessly. Same setup right. as the, um, the plugs and the motion sensors that you have. 
uh, the, the initial setup with the firmware update took a little while, maybe, you know, five, 10 minutes to update the firmware on the device. After that, it's instantaneous and it works incredibly well. But I will warn you, most people do have three-way light switches. I'm a, you have a lot of stairs in your home, right, Colm? So I'm assuming I do. those light switches are three ways too, right? What is it? So three stairs? Yes, it, same. Exactly. So basically, if you, you turn the light off or on at the top of the stairs, go down the stairs, you can turn the light off and they're in Correct. opposite, opposite uh, switches. That Correct. is what I believe is a three-way switch. I'm still... You know, it's not the most important thing, you know, as far as knowing all that stuff. It's actually a good testament to the Wemo light switch because me being somebody that never touches electrical stuff uh, can still install this in relatively a short amount of time. And then on the app side of it, it should really just set it and forget it. I mean, it really just took as long, if not shorter, to, to update. And for forty nine ninety nine, I think if you put this in the right place, and integrated with IFTTT, you mm -hmm. get a Philips Hue-like experience for $150 less than you would pay for the starter pack. I mean, right there, that's worth it right there to try it. I mean, there is like, I'm a little worried about the whole self-install, and that's my biggest fear from it. And I really need to get over it because it's obviously something you can do. It can't be that hard. If I can do it, then anybody can do it. I, I'm being 100% uh, honest about it. I have a power to you outlet. We, we, you know, I talked to my buddy Grant who works uh, at Newer Technology, and he still asked me after all this time, hey, did you install that, that outlet? And I, it just slipped my mind. But now I'm a little bit braver because I have an understanding at least where the, the light switches and the breaker switches and everything. And that's where it goes for you probably too. You're just afraid, man, I want to make sure it's off because if I hit anything and the electricity's on, God forbid, what'll happen? Right, right. Hey, I will say this. I was thrown off. If you are a person looking to, to install this and you're not quite sure if you have a three-way switch or not, I think that extra red wire, when you're looking off camera. Are you, are you laughing at me? Or are you looking at the video? No. Okay. <laughs> what are you talking are you about? I'm not... Game? You're watching a baseball game. No, I'm going to the baseball game, so I'm not watching it. There you go. Okay, I'm just checking. You're looking right. off camera. It's not, you're doing it again. What are you looking at? <laughs> Nothing. So you just look and laugh? All right, I have the feed over there. That is correct. What feed? The feed for the show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you look so Anything stupid from the chat room? That. Stop it. <laughs> Put the camera on me. That. Anything from the chat room? Why would you do that? Uh, let's see. In the chat, people thought it was Dota wait, wait, because uh, the, the big left. event. Wait, the feed's on the left. Why are you looking there? What? Here? No, to your <laughs> left. You were just looking to the left laughing. I mean, if the feed's over there, see, that's not the... That's not the <laughs> so, that's yeah, um, Nikki in the chat room says, that's the reason why I can't use the other Wemo product for my overhead light in my foyer. Frown Town. So basically, she doesn't have, uh, it sounds like the three way switch that you're talking about. Yeah, she was going to put it on her porch. And that's something, you know, and I could say, hey, I'm going to put in our Wemo switch at the bottom. But according mm -hmm. to Belkin Cares on Twitter, they said that the, 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 that that might not be a, uh, you know, a viable solution or might be a problem or a conflict with that. And it can salt an electrician. And to me, that's not the point of this whole thing. You shouldn't need an right. electrician for the install. This is home automated. You don't want to bring in a professional because now it's not 50 bucks. It's another 50 or 75 bucks to have it installed correctly. It's not right. worth it at that point. I'll just switch rooms, put it somewhere like here in the office where I can turn it on and off just to have it for that cool factor. Um, you know, speaking of which, the next thing, we're still on our home automation thing. I'm looking at the iPad mini, which is not Retina, but it's it works great. I like it. You don't. Oh, I like it when it has Retina on it. And it's a I like real it device. fine, not Retina. It's fine. But the next story we're going to talk about is right along the way of home automation. It's the more expensive option for people that want to have uh, some functionality with their lights. Yeah. It's Philips uh, Hue bulbs, but they, they now have expanded uh, to $80 Living Colors Bloom and $90 Light Strips. And That's what I'm in for. Down there, if you scroll a little bit, that there's a there's mood lighting under your couch and under certain parts. And and somebody uh, somebody said in one of the comments here on Engadget that anybody that puts mood lighting under their couch does not deserve to procreate. <laughs> so <laughs> I I, have um, to tend to, I don't see where mood lighting outside of the studio type feel 
I mean, it might serve us here in our studios and give us a nice, uh, clean lighting source, but where would you use this outside of that? No, I agree with you because if, I mean, it's too bad Andrew's not on the show today, even though I love you, Suncast. But because of his shot, he's really big into those LED lights, and I think he has like some there in the shop behind him. So next time when you watch one of his shows. Uh, but yeah, I mean, in another place in my house, like where would I put it? Like in the buffet to, to display our china we got from our wedding that no one uses, and it just sits over there. It was we had to have. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm looking at it. The, the LED strip is 6.6 feet, so you can stretch it along, but it can get pretty expensive. Can you cut it you or no? Can you cut it? I do not. It has adhesive backing. I don't. It can be cut to size, so 6.6 oh. feet, feet or lower. What I'd like to see, now the only thing that I see with these Philips Hue bulbs, besides geofencing with your phone, is the fact that you can use it when you're watching sports or certain things, and it alerts right. you. But somebody that's not into that can be really annoyed or frightened <laughs> by that kind right. of stuff. So I can see if it's a multi-light LED strip, you know, or your color, say the Eagle score, I can get that LED light strip to kind of um, do the old Knight Rider thing or something in green. I mean, that's kind of silly and not really a practical way to spend your money. But, no, you know, they sent us I mean, some. I like, cool. Let's try it out. Knows? I really like the whole idea of LED light strips, and I'd have to come up with ways to use them. I mean, I have a couch over here. Should I do it underneath the couch? No, you know, I think it, that 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 half a bookcase behind you, right there on your shot, if you had a set up, that. if you had a set up like uh, like Andrew, where you had some, uh, like um, you know, say you had some action figures or something like that, or some of your stuff, and you wanted to have that that lighting in there in the case and turn it on and off without having to have a switch or reaching behind it, it would be, a, you know, dis display cases. I can see if you have footballs, basketballs, things like that, and using the LED light strips to set a tone or a color with your favorite team. That's that's kind of a cool factor right there. Belts. At, at that point, you could just yeah. go and get those uh, LED strips from IKEA for like thirty-five bucks. Yeah, thirty-five bucks, but they don't have the IFTGT integration. Sun Kai asked. No. Where the, the, Do you really need the, that though? If you're just putting it in a bookshelf. Well, I I think I think that is the selling point for these home automation tools, and the fact that when I have a Philips Hue bulb in my thing, or or Colm has that motion sensor in his in his office or in other places. You just walk by and it automatically comes on. You walk away, it goes off. Then if you're talking about electricity, like uh, appliances, like air conditioners, standalone air conditioners, uh, you know, to be able to export to a Google spreadsheet and see how much energy that appliance is using for you in a month. Yeah, I think the extra 40 to 40, 40 bucks or 45 bucks for that is definitely worth it. You know, the one in Ikea is basically you'd have to reach behind where the that little turn switch is, and it's, it's kind of going to be an yeah. uh, annoyance. And these Philips Hue bulbs are supposed to have much more of a uh, lifespan than a regular light bulb and LED strip. So as opposed to your cheap Ikea ones, uh, I think the bulbs are, aren't the bulbs supposed to last like five years, Calm Those Hue bulbs? I think longer than that, aren't they? They, they, there's some ridiculous 10 or 20,000 hours or something like that they're supposed to last. Yeah. So if you're only using it part of the time or as a, uh, a, you know, as a, um, as a light in your foyer or your hallway or something like that, it, it does. In your living room, I assume that's going to be an every day for a few hours a day type usage model. So I, I don't see it being that. You know, these, these, are, these seem more affordable than buying the three pack of the bulbs and that, 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 um, that Wi-Fi thing for 199 Now, here's my question. I, I think you need, I think you need that Wi-Fi router anyway. So you might have to buy the starter kit and then these are add-ons. Oh, well, that would be terrible then. Then it wouldn't be, it would be way too expensive for what it does. <laughs> it's way too expensive before you even get into these add-ons. But I know, but I'd still like to try. I'd still, you know, I think I if would. I ever, if I ever had a good amount of extra money, $200 to do that, to get that kind of level of home automation with the geo fencing alone would be good. If I'm within 20 feet of a light, it turns on before I even get out of my car. That is a, that's a, that's a safety issue. That's something I would want for people in my family to be able to, to have that if I have handfuls of groceries and 
and they go in there. We've we've, we've told that 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 use model before. Right. I think the next two things that we're going to talk about here, Colm, we're probably going to brush over since now you're not in love with Android anymore. Oh, my God. Can I take a nap during this segment? Who cares? Two new phones are coming out. Woo. They look just like the Samsung ones. Okay. So here we go. You can talk, <laughs> see how fast we go through it. Moto X is, uh, is announced and will be released soon. The LG G2 oh as opposed to the LG G1. We're going to skip right to the LG G2 there, Suncast. Because the the Motorola uh, X review, it was fine, but I'm not too much into it. I think I think the ca comparison chart down here uh, between the LG G2, the Samsung Galaxy S4, the HTC One, and I lost the Motorola X that was supposed to be there. I don't know why it didn't come up. Those screen sizes are ridiculous, though. I mean, they're beautiful screens, no doubt about yeah. it. I think uh, that's the best thing, and they're they're putting big batteries in. Uh, the LG G2 is probably, uh, in my opinion, looking just at battery size, it has a 3,000 milliamp battery, in it, and that's going to be the biggest of all of them, which in comparison, um, a Galaxy Note 2 comes with a 3.1 something battery. 100, I thought. Right? Yeah. So this is pretty much on par with that. Yeah. yeah. No interest, though. No temptation to go back. Uh, to no. Android. I look Nothing. at my the other day um, I was talking to someone and they're like yeah I called your other phone and it, it went straight to voicemail and I'm like oh didn't even plug it in because I don't care about it at all. <laughs> what are you doing with your second line? How are you handling that? What oh, it's become like my office phone that when I took it out and that's why it was with me and then I forgot to plug it in because for some reason it drained all the batteries I kept switching all the time they yeah. just drain like so fast now um, yeah it just sits here and uh, takes calls for me, and then I have a cell phone, which is the iPhone 5, which is perfect. It's not just a cell phone. It's more than that. It's a personal Wait. assistant. It's your, it's, it's your everything. How's that? Yeah, it is pretty much my everything. <laughs> so I was going to add when Samsung breaks out with the new flagship. Are you going to be down cash? on you Android don't want any still? Of phones, do you? What's or is that? it just Wait, the you... Moto X and the LG Android devices that you don't like? No, I'm just... He's tired of it. I He's went there. I tried it. I stayed in. I tr I really did it. I, well, how long was I on that? Six months? And yeah, I, I think so. Something yeah. like that. I couldn't stand. The, when it came down, I couldn't stand that every time I wanted to do something, the OS would interrupt that process and ask me, which one of these apps do you want to do? And I'm just like, oh, why do you well, always you, ask me this question? Can't you set that as a default what action you want to I take? I swear I would do that. And it would be like, it would come up all the time. No, it's just I think Android by default, any app available throughout the OS is it's it's a you know just a it shares out like a you know branches out from a, like a tree. So right. if I had seven different apps that could could access my photo, I think they'd ask for permission to access your photos, much like iOS, right? So once you give it permission when you install that app, it's it's always going to ask if you want to share it to that. Right. Well, I don't even know if it asked you. I think when you first turn it on. And you just install the app. You automatically see that list of things, and you you install the app. Then you're done. Right. You know, even though Android, you see a list, location, cell service, whatever else. I think it's in there somewhere. So we'll skip over. We already spent too much time on Android. I'm you sure. You want these phones? No, no one cares about these phones. <laughs> <laughs> this I'm, is I'm with Coleman. It's, it's, I don't <laughs> necessarily understand why people. Android has gotten to the point where it's like, and I think phones in general have kind of gotten to this point where it's, I, I don't necessarily care about the specs. I care about how well it's going to work for me to do what it is that I want to do. And yes, there's mm -hmm. something to be said for Android where you can customize it. It's flexible enough where you can set it up to do that to a degree. But it's just, I, I think we're almost in a way at a plateau with smartphones right now. Right. I don't. I, I don't think so. As far as that's just Android, I, you know, there's no there's no value in an Android device because the second you buy, it, you're waiting for the next generation. Like the the S4 owners are waiting for the S5 or the Note threes coming out. They're doing the every other release. I think the S5 will probably be announced in October, November. Wow. That's that's there. It's too mud, muddy. That's why having an iDevice device is much better because of the the lifespan of it through stuff like this, like iOS 7 beta 5. We have iPhone 5s. We're guaranteed to get an update. Most iPhone 4s, I think the 4s are done, uh, but 
if we go to this Mac rumor story and uh, you scroll down a little bit here and there, uh, Suncast for the sake of the video, people be able to see what they, they're, they're tweaking this column. They're tweaking the way it looks, the fonts, uh, and you're much more on top of this stuff than me. Uh, as far as fonts and uh, the letterpress look, I think it's called for iOS 7. Uh, give us your take on what's changed and how this looks as compared to beta 1. Well, let me just tell you, I'm, uh, I've am i been only Ooh. running the beta on my iPad. So right. only my iPad has run the um, beta. And this is the, I can say of all, this is what, number five? This is the yeah. first one where I would say, okay, you can put the beta on your device because it's actually functional. Uh, there were so many bugs I've been look, seeing throughout everything, but now it's snappier. It like all the icons finally work like icons weren't even working, but, and also the text is getting, I mean, it says here in this article that they're, um, basically increasing the thickness of the font in a way. And that really does help because it was almost like so light. It was hard to see. And I think they're they're realizing those areas and they're fixing them. So, like like they said, it is a beta, and you can see the process of it getting better. Yeah, I'm gonna read through some of the stuff. Setting on your settings, the icons in the settings menu have seen a complete design going a complete redesign, I guess, going from standard blue icons to a variety of square icons in various colors. Right. Uh, we go down to Control Center. Control Center settings now allow the function to be turned off while in apps, preventing Control Center from being accessed from the bottom of the screen while playing games or otherwise using apps. Uh, the power off uh, has changed. The slider bar that displays when the phone is being powered off has been slightly altered. Also, Twitter. The Twitter icon has been redesigned. Rather than a white bird on a blue background, now depicts a blue bird on a white background. Uh, banner notifications oh, can yeah, now right. be pulled down to access additional information. And uh, sorry, Suncast, what was that? No, I said, oh, you're right. I didn't notice that. I just yeah. about the Twitter icon. Phone. Uh, the icons that are displayed while a user is in a call have been slightly altered with the addition of circles around the icon. It, that looks huge right there because it just kind of right. blended into the black from what I see. Uh, you have ex uh, new accessibility options are now on off toggle options under the accessibility menu. The boot screen when installing this, iOS oh. 7 beta 5. Many iPhone 5 users noted that the color of the boot screen matched their devices with a white screen used for white phones and a black screen used for black phones. The differentiation appears to be limited to the iPhone 5 at this point in time as iPad owners and older iPhone users have not notice the change. So you you didn't get that either, did you? Uh, no, color. I didn't. But that's interesting. Would that mean that they're not going to have uh, phones yet that have colors? Unless this is a test to test if they could do different colors. I don't know. Uh, you know what? If they're talking about iPhone, maybe it is. Because the low-cost iPhone is supposed to be different colors. There's not going to be right. a different color iPad uh, at least not that we've seen. Uh, the last one is messages. In iOS 7 beta 4, Apple changed messages to default to displaying just the first name and a last initial of the contact in a conversation. Uh, with beta 5, only the first name is displayed by default, though other options can be selected in the mail settings menu, which is linked to messages. Oh, that's a little different there, isn't it? Uh, to access this feature, go to settings, mail, contacts, and calendars, short name under contacts. Hmm. So messages is under mail now? For the settings. Messages is under mail. That's what it said. But it's not really mail. No, there's some messages have... in a mail setting here. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're they're separate still in the settings. Okay, maybe they're talking about actual email messages, but I thought it was messages the app. That's what it said. When is this uh is there an official date when it's coming out or they just said end of summer? Well, we're talking about five betas now. Don't they usually have an average of five to seven at the most before the release, which would make yeah, it... this is getting really at the, close. At this clip, every three weeks or so, there's a new beta. So yeah. three, four weeks. I, I think they're going to have this done at least by mid-September, if not the end of August. I could totally see that. And I would guess the end of August, and then in time to any last-minute bugs before the announcement, and then they're just going to do the announcement. And then I don't know if we'll get iOS 7 right then and there or they'll wait till uh, the servers are cleared up because they'll come down with the pre-orders <laughs> probably again. And uh, I can't wait to try it. I can't wait to get a new look on my iPhone. I think it's nice. And I'm a little tempted now, like you said, to download the beta, at least maybe on my iPad. I don't know. I think I'll do it on the phone before the iPad. Right. I think you can do it now and not have to worry. Before it was just really a lot of headaches. To be honest with oh, you, no, I was really upset. Worked right? Are the any of the apps worked even? Yeah, like 
apps weren't working. They some were opening and then crashing. It was just it like ruined my experience with my iPad. But now well, it's good. Let let me ask you, Com, because you're you're a graphic designer. I want to get your thoughts on the changes that they made to the icons. Um, let me right. bring it up here so that you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, if you look on the screen here from the left to right, left is before, right is after. They've changed these icons. I want to know what you're thinking is on those changes. They had to bring in someone else or they had to tell Johnny Ive to totally go a different direction. And when I think about these, I think that they were afraid that what was on the left was way too dramatic. And on the, they needed to have something people are familiar with with that rounded corner square there while still implementing the little the specific icons they were trying to do you know what i mean it, like they, it looks like a compromise to me yeah exactly that's the perfect it looks word like a, that I is think a what they compromise have before thing. where it was just the the icon itself i think looks great it really great. looks good it's nice and it's clean but now that they put this uh oval the box around it it's like uh, it just doesn't look as nice. It yeah. really does I, not. I thought that they were. I thought this was going to be the last we would see of icons in iOS. I thought that was the death of icons yeah. because there's they no icons. They didn't need to do the this. Port. Well, no, supposedly the whole Johnny I supposedly doesn't like the whole rounded corners thing, but I mean, I can see where he it can have a fight work with, with those else. icons. It doesn't work with this design. I agree with you 100%, but I'm saying if you still look at the icons that are on it, I mean, they, this they want to have this rounded box. Someone there is just saying they have to have the rounded box and everything. And that's well, where they, it's so awful. It would have gone a long way to, to making it look more Mac-like without the rounded box. There's I agree. A lot of Mac icons, and that would have... Maybe it'll change again. This is changing a lot from what we saw in 1, 2, 3, 4, and now that's 5. Good. So they might turn around and be able to give a a drop shadow or something behind it to give it more uh, more layers and textures to where they won't need to round the corners of the big box. Well, I, By the way, I, I, agree love, with I love the name of the Wi-Fi um, network on this. Free viruses. Free viruses. Free viruses. I think what Sunken is saying yeah. is basically, and I agree with him, is that they should go back to the first version, but if they need to do something with the colors, if they think that's working, put those colors in the icons instead of just the one blue. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Right now, it just seems like someone said you have to make this so people understand that's a button. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it very much feels like a compromise. <laughs> yeah. Where's the uh, off, off topic question? Where's the, where's the jailbreak community at with iOS 6 and 7? What, what in, what, you know, is there a reason to even jailbreak now? I don't know. I know that I the think Pebble, you'll find people the in the box. community that say that there is a nece necessity to do that because I think there are certain applications out there that are nice to have that you can't necessarily get without jailbreaking. I know that uh, the Pebble smartwatch uh, has a, it's opened up. If you jailbreak your phone, you're able to get a lot more notifications and a lot more functionality out of it. So I, I haven't checked out any jailbreak stuff in a while. And like you said, Suncast, the thing about jailbreaking. Uh, is we can have it both ways. We can have either one of these screenshots or something completely different on our iPhones. That was part of the, the, the charm of jailbreaking. We could have, you know, the Dark Knight stuff on there. We could have different icons. We can make it look like Mac OS 9 on our, on our iPhone. I, I don't know how far we are from even being able to, to bring that level of customization to our phones. I wish they would have, you know, app packages to design or pimp your phone out uh, to another degree and open that up for people to do. Yeah, I, I think that's pr pretty much what it is. And what you're saying is that Apple needs to add another degree of customization to the iPhone for those people that are in the jailbreaking community that want to do something a little bit more. Yeah, great. But one thing they don't need to do is actually improve their customer service, but they're going to. Thank you for the segue, Suncast, by the way. Uh, according to Mac rumors, Apple is preparing to upgrade. I don't know if it's possible, but upgrade their Apple Care now with 24 7 chat support and their revamped website. Uh, I think it's no secret, and anybody in the chat room will agree, and anybody listening or watching will agree as well, that Apple Care cannot be beaten. I think it's one of the top three reasons that people buy Apple products, Macs and iOS devices, because you know your products support it. You know you have a local Apple store usually, or at least 
the Apple Care people online and now online are at least calling in, and you can get a great turnaround in customer service if you do have problems with your iOS or Mac device. So this is definitely an improvement on top of, of a great service as it stands right now. I agree with you. Uh, I used to also think that way. And then uh, I learned about sites where you can get Apple Care cheaper. Expertcom. There you go. Well, no, I'm not talking about buying the Apple Care from Apple. I'm talking about the oh. resulting service. No, I'm Ooh. saying I, I buy all my Apple Care from Expertcom too. It's much cheaper. Right. Uh, you can save a, a bunch, I mean, up to like 30% in some cases off of what you usually pay. And this, the Apple Care is the same Apple Care you would buy from the store or even Apple.com. I'm just talking about the actual service they provide for that uh, two or three years that you're going to use Apple Care. I think it's great that now I don't even have to, maybe I, maybe I can avoid a Genius Bar appointment or going to the Apple store and going through that crowd and just live chat with somebody and get my information and get a, get a replacement sent out to right. me. Just that's like that what I want. for a live chat. That's I what that's I want because I don't need to go in and be like, did you restart it? And being asked all these ridiculous IT questions that I don't need to, <laughs> that I already did. I just want to go, listen, I know what's wrong. I tried everything. It's not working. I want to send this to you. And if that's part of it, then I'm really excited. Yeah. So that'll be good news. August 12th, that'll start. So look out for that. So by the time we have our next T4 show, we'll be able to talk about it. That'll be good. So now it's time. I'm looking at what you put for the homeowner column segment. Wow. What? It is the homeowner column segment at homeowner, <laughs> call, at homeowner <laughs> column on Twitter. And I'm looking at the, the, the product that you linked in the show notes. And I'm like, okay. Whoa. <laughs> Michael, I not just, all the products I recommend are expensive, ridiculous products. No, Look at this, everyone. Look at that. See this, everyone? Right. Look right. at that. Look. Look at that. You can see through it right there. It's got it's got metal. These are rings. What this is? I mean, what is this, Michael? Do you know what this is? It's a three ring binder. It, it's, it is. It's, we're in that. Uh, I think we're in that part of the year where there's slow tech news. That's what I'm starting <laughs> to sense. So, I mean, listen. One of the best things is the area that we as geeks or tech people have in our office, and but we have to keep it organized. So I've decided now with the whole, there's a lot of things that are digital, right, with our bills and all that, but then we get a lot of paper still. So I figured the best way, I mean, I used to do filing systems, but like they're different size stuff and it would always mess up. So now I've got in the habit of basically hole punching it, popping it in here, naming this whatever category is, as you can see behind me. And I'm organized now, and I don't have to stress out about all those things that come. So that's what I learned today on Homeowner Calm. Three ring binders. I believe Suncast has a link. Under $6 $6 on Staples, right? $6. I want to bring that up, that beautiful. That's a a steal right there. Look at that. I wouldn't wouldn't suggest getting it wet. And that's J Maverick design color, too. I'm sure that's why. Well, obviously, that's why I picked red. I do. I do need to organize. It's a mess. That's why I've turned the camera around so that way I don't, you don't see all this junk. Yeah, no, no home, no real home. That was like the home project was basically coming up with a filing system. So I felt that was uh, part of the thing. I mean, it doesn't always have to be physical labor, right? Yeah, but no scanning and digitally. Are you digitally backing it up and putting it in? See, I looked into that. That's interesting. You said that there is a Canon. I believe it's called a Canon Pixma. Yeah, um, that's the, an air print too, right? Right. It has great air print and it has it can take 35 pages at a time for scanning that you put in and it'll go I mean, I know it's not that fast, but um yeah, so I was looking in that but it's not at the right price point yet, I feel. Like it's still I think I think it was at almost $300 for the one that's Ooh, the best that's one to get. One I'm of. <laughs> oh, so until that comes down to it should be at like $100, then I would think it's worth it. Yeah. I have a I have a uh, uh, neat scanner here that I integrate sometimes. But you're right; sometimes that can be a real pain. Unless if you're doing bulk jobs, it's 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 a pain. But you know, the iPhone actually doesn't work that bad for taking pictures and scanning them and digitally archiving them in Dropbox. I used to do that with receipts all the time, and mm-hmm. and even uh, there's there's Doc Scanner Pro, which was free for a while, and that worked. I'm out a view great. scan guy. View yeah. scan. I can you, use my you, scanner. You, I have an HP scanner over there. I put the document on it. I open up ViewScan. It talks to it with 
AirPlay or AirPrint, one of those, and it'll scan the document and send it to my phone, and then I can email it out, put it in my uh, photos. That is a really great app. V-U-E? ViewScan? V-U-E-S-C-A-N. ViewScan. Nice. I think I have the pro version. I'll take a look at it. That's my favorite because so, uh, every time people like want documents and I want to get them on my phone as quick as possible, that's the best way. I'll have to check that out. I'm a there Canon. I'm a Canon person for the printers now rather than HP because it eats yeah. up so much ink. Eats up so much ink. Uh, but um, have you pulled your 3DS out? Have you tried to do this? Yes. Uh, here it is, Michael. Story? Okay. Well, let me uh, so, take off that charger. I think I got enough juice to make it through the segment. Here it is. So I just so. did the update live. Uh, why don't you tell me what I'm supposed to look for? Because I don't see anything different. Well, I'll just note a title and a few words. Nintendo 3DS update brings more Wii Plaza Pals with Street Pass Relay. So uh, those Street Pass has proven to be extremely popular, much less likely to directly cross a fellow NDS or N and 3DS user stateside then in a console's home country, Japan. But thanks to the new update, you now be able to pick up me, Avatar Buddies, via Street, Pay, Street Pass Relay. Do you know what Street Pass Relay is? I know what Street Pass is. I don't know. Relay is, must be the new marketing term. But Street Pass, this thing is awesome. When I go to, when we go to like uh, PAX East or Disney World, I throw this in my bag and I get Street Passes from people all the time. So Well, this I is a uh, relay where basically this is a little, I don't know, this is a little shady. When a 3DS user crosses a Nintendo Zone hotspot, their data is automatically stored and oh passed God. on to another 3DS owner who hits the same relay point. You'll find them in North America, Best Buy, Simon Malls, Future Shop, AT&T, Wi-Fi hotspots located in Starbucks, McDonald's, and Barnes & Noble. You were just at Starbucks yesterday. That'll help you sco scoop up friends and play new Me Plaza games, Me Force, Flower Town, Warrior's Way, Monster Mana, Monster Manor, not Monster Mana. That's a different <laughs> animal. Monster yeah. Mana? You don't want Monster Mana. He's, the, he, you know, he's very you old and back. Yeah, he's unfiltered. All right. So I'm, sold, I'm in the plaza here. I'm not really seeing yeah. anything new. Wow. This is a little more popular than I thought. They sold $4 million worth of this in the first month, meaning you should have more potential players than ever hanging around your gate. I don't feel comfortable with them storing. What kind of information would they store? Just your game saves, or is there other yes, information? No, they have your they have your email address. They have your name. They basically have your age. I mean, everything you have to input when you set up the device. They pretty much have everything. Are you comfortable huh? with that? Are you comfortable with that? Am I comfortable with that? Yeah. Do you have a, Do you have a specific email just for the Nintendo? Or are you using your yes. email that we know? I, it's basically like my gaming email. Okay, so you have a kind of like what handles all the spam and the stuff you don't care about. This is your email. Right, correct. Okay. Just making sure. So that's not too good. $4 million bucks in a month. I don't think they've been making any money every month up until this. I mean, the Wii U's been a complete just complete disappointment. And uh, all they got is the 3DS, I think. 3DS has, is actually a better system dollar for dollar than the Wii U. You oh, agree, agree with that. Oh, I totally agree. I love that system. Uh, I've been a huge Nintendo mobile brand for a long time. Uh, I mean, yes, there's all these great games that are coming to iOS and Android and all that, but when it comes down to like a full, almost console experience, these little handhelds, because of the, the control that they, they give you, is what really puts them over the top. I mean, this and the Vita are a different level, but you have to have a need for it. I mean... When I'm traveling a lot or I'm doing things, yeah, this is awesome. But when I'm at home, what? why would I pull this out when I can go play a game on Steam? And that's the, where you have to be that type of person. And I can't wait to see as my kid gets older, like I assume I would start him first on a handheld than, a, than I would a console, but I don't know. He's many years yeah, away from that. Is that 3DS or 3DS XL? It's an XL. And actually, if you, Michael, if you actually want to get an XL... Uh, it's not in the notes, but they're coming up with an all black one that's really like matte finish. It's really nice. It's about to come out. What's the price point on those now? Do they have any deals? Are they trying to, to move them? I, I assume. What's the, I think uh, it's price? like the same price at one ninety nine, and you get a game with it, and that's the difference. Oh, they yeah. got to drop that soon. I know, because well, the uh, the regular the original three DS is like one twenty. Yeah, but you want an XL. You don't want it. Oh yeah, the XL is great. 
You were so pissed when they came out with the XL like three or four months after the regular one. I got rid of the regular one and lost all my stupid free games that I got for uh, being one of the original people. Great. <laughs> so happy about that. Well, let's go to the Vita. Unfortunately, I'm just going to have to read the story. I was trying to, since early this morning, trying to download the 2.6 update for the PlayStation Vita, uh, which basically I'm just going to read it here. Not only does it make management I have games, it. You have it. I have it. You did, have it. You did update it. I did it. So what do I got to look for here? Oh, wow. Uh, so, so it's got PlayStation Plus improvements. Oh, the icons uh, look better. Representing menu functions, games, and apps are noticeably crisper, too. They also added Sony, meaning they also added the ability to toggle wireless connectivity, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 3G, and airplane mode by holding down the system's blue PS button. Yeah, and also your, uh, let me see. Yeah, they it looks nicer. Yeah, no, they look That's good. Uh, I can't hear me. They look What's sharper. That? Yeah, there's a few tweaks right here. You can go to the official site and see what the tweaks are. I'm going to go right now. I, you know, I still have to say, PlayStation Plus really, really puts the edge over uh, Nintendo with 3DS. It makes me want to keep the Vita. I get those free games. I got a bunch of them on there right now. I'm going to travel this week. So it really... Uh, and just for that fact of the travel, it serves me well. I get a console-like experience uh, with that. And when I want to plug it into the big screen, I just bring the oil with me. It really doesn't take up any room. Okay, going to say it's easier to access the PlayStation Network servers, even though I can't access them to update it. So you can upload or download save data. There's a music and video update, the settings I we just talked about. And uh, you can hold down the PS button uh, to bring up uh, the network features. Uh, also, home screen, you can now use oh, the yeah, that. system buttons to customize the home screen. On the home screen, when you press a button on the PS Vita system, the cursor appears on the screen to enter edit mode, press the triangle while the cursor is displayed. Holding it down. I like that. You know what that looks like? Control center. It does it's look like, like control center. <laughs> Doesn't oh, it? this is so much better. Wow. Um, yeah, I agree with you. I love the Vita. I mean, there's a great game that just came out for the Vita that is multiplayer that called Dragon Crown, but it's full price right now. But I would love to play to that with that you. Nun, I got to put the Nuns game on there. That's Nuns Attack. Do. Yeah, I have that on here. Yeah, Nuns Attack. All right, we're going to go down the line, go to another video game that okay. we're both looking forward to, and that's Madden 25, 25th anniversary of Madden. First story, we're skipping ahead to the demo details. Uh, yes. You bring it out from pastapadre.com, which is the number one sports gaming website out there. And uh, the rumors are true. Tuesday, August 13th, the demo for Madden 25, which means sometime Tuesday, we will use the Elgato Game Capture HD card to put up some gameplay on T4 Show videos on YouTube. Um, we're not sure if it's going to have a quarter length. We're not sure if it's going to be a full game. Last year was a full game with the two teams, right, Colm? Yes, yeah, we it was got not. Play a full game. Correct. So NCAA was a full game too. So I'm assuming hopefully this will be a full game. Uh, the new modes, like uh, they showed some owner mode stuff and everything. We're going to go to the next Pasta Padre article here. Uh, there's a couple of videos there. I don't know if we can play them with no sound, uh, but basically on pastapadre.com, the new Madden NFL 25 videos show more owner mode and extended gameplay. Wow. And uh, there we go right there. Bring it up right here. Uh, what do you think about owner mode? Uh, it looks like something that would be awesome if I was about 14, but now <laughs> I have too much time. I just want to go play RG3 and get out. Let's be well, honest. I, I don't have time for that. I would think you would like that because you're a role-playing fan. And I know, uh, but it's just too stuff. much. You know, with all my Dota time, like how do I fit in something to own a franchise? Look at that. You can edit the owner. Look at that guy. I don't think an owner is going to wear a polo shirt. Mark Cuban does. I want. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, he does. He wears t-shirts. He's sloppy I would, looking. I would be a full He's suit guy. Him. Would you? I wonder if I wonder if you can use uh, the the game face on the owner, like you could last would, year with with the player. Why was that? That was like a thing with like all those games, Rainbow Six, like all that at one time, and then it just disappeared again. I, I don't know why that. they can't get that technology down. It would be amazing. It's great for the sports games. I don't think the Rainbow Six, remember we did mine, it looked like I had cornrows. It wasn't too good at all. Uh, but the 
game face on EA was not bad for Madden last year. And then you're right. It actually just disappeared from my game. Yeah. I, my character just never up. They never re uploaded the mm -hmm. face as I was playing the season. So I just had like a regular look really weird. Yeah. So, um, the demo is set for August 13th. Uh, here's the question, uh, that we all ask, are you going to get the Xbox 360? Are you going to wait for the Xbox one? You just going to take your chances that you're going to have a good trade in deal? Or are you skipping getting, over Madden? I'm oh, you sorry, you're setting up. I just, I just walked cool. over it. You just set it up, and I just totally terrible. I didn't sell it. Just go ahead. <laughs> what do they call yeah. when you don't when you don't sell it? What's the term for that? Not selling it. That's terrible. There's not some kind of word. No. Well, what do you <laughs> What are you going to do? Stick the video. Uh, what am I going to do is you're going to say, Colm, we're getting it on this system, and that's what I'm getting it. I have to say, Michael, I have not been this excited for a Madden game since, like, we played it, like, the first year we started playing it together. Like, I'm really excited about it this year. I think it has to do with I fought my team finally, the team I love to play, finally has, like, a quarterback. He's going to have good stats because he's been in the year for a league. And I mean, that's what it really relies on. When I'm, when I'm going out there with Rex Grossman, it just does not get me excited for yeah. a, a game. I'll tell you, our, our Super Bowl specials keep getting better every year. You never yeah, miss. Right down to the wire with Dennis Pitta, son of a bitch. And now that he's, was, how funny is that, that he's out for the whole year now? No, well, we don't have a Madden curse with our Super Bowl special. It has nothing to well, do with that. That's I'm saying. So, so Barry Sanders, I would say he's on the cover this year for Madden 25. I would suggest <laughs> God, you don't do any clubs or do anything because anything you're going to get shot. Something bad's going to happen to you for being on the cover. Hip he's going to be surgery, standing on the sidelines and someone's going to hit him and break his leg. Hip surgery, I'm telling you. You believe in the Madden curse? No, I believe in the T4 Madden curse. Oh, that. There is no T4 has a curse all on its own without Madden. We don't have to worry about that. No, I'm um, excited. I think this new engine looks awesome. I, you did not like college football, which I was surprised because I played um, uh, two games of it, and I really like the new engine. Like It feels... I mean, the engine's not the problem. It's just the presentation and the player models aren't as crisp. I played Madden 13 after that, and it, the player models were still more crisp and detailed. Well, maybe, maybe that's on yeah. purpose because of the NCAA lawsuit. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So you'll tell NCAA me what we're getting, and that's it, right? NCAA, I'll just tell you what to get, and that'll be it. You can blame me. NCAA so has always been a placeholder for the two, three, four weeks until Madden comes out. You admitted that. Everybody who's a pro football fan just uses that to get their player onto a USB stick or just play it and get your $30 trade in towards Madden. That's all it really is to me. Unless you're hardcore college football, you're not going to buy the pro football game then. You're just going to keep college. Right. That's right. All right. So, so you'll uh, tell me and I'll get it. I'll tell you and you'll get it. And then you'll say you'll play it online and you won't. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. We're going to go to something that might not be, it might be as exciting to a lot of people as a binder, but um, I'm a big backpack fan. I like backpacks uh, because I travel so much and it, it counts as a personal item when you fly. So you can get a lot of stuff in your backpack and, and not have to check a bag if you have a roller bag along with that. Uh, and I've always used the ones from Radtech, Colm. I don't know if you ever bought anything from Radtech.us. No, I have not, but I've seen this bag, uh, one of your bags in person at Disney, and I remember I was blown away with it. Yeah, and you know for a fact, dude, I, I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't treat these, these backpacks very well. They go to the gym no. with me. They go in the airport. I stuff them under the seat. They're in a bag, trunks of cars, stuff like that. I mean, they really do take a beating, and right now, I don't know if it, I'm on my second or third year with the STM uh, Revolution. If we can bring it up there, Suncast. It's the Revolution uh, laptop backpack, um, and this is the medium size, I believe, and it's 100 bucks. but for what you're getting in all the pockets and, and, and the protection you get with it and the durability uh, along with that, uh, trust me, uh, you know, lifetime warranty that comes with it. If you scroll down a little bit under the add to card, uh, it's worth it alone. I got a new backpack right here they sent to me for review, so I'm going to do an updated video. And then uh, the next one, I mean, they're not exciting videos like this girl here showing you what it has. You can't really get a great camera angle or anything. But the 100 bucks compared to what you're going to spend on a laptop uh, backpack at Best Buy or anywhere other brick-and-mortar store, 
you're better off just ordering from them, get the lifetime warranty. It also comes with um, a compartment with the, the rain cover on it, Colm, which mm -hmm. really comes in handy if you have a lot of electronics in your backpack. I can't recommend it enough. It, it's really a great... If you have like a MacBook Air and an iPad Mini, it's going to be like you have nothing in the backpack. And I store like my Bluetooth speakers, Bluetooth headphone, resistance bands, uh, protein powder, pre-workout stuff, and my, my, you know, stuff with my vitamins. It's really like a complete uh, travel companion for me. And I'm going to, I'm going to just going to stuff the one I have here, the brand new one with a bunch of that stuff and travel for four days. And that'll last me another two or three years. Good backpack. I love it. Um, when I saw when you showed it to me, I couldn't believe the amount of stuff you had in it. And it also one thing that about backpacks for me is like the way that it like, I guess, hugs your shoulders. So it's comfortable. Oh, yeah. And that one was really comfortable. That's a great point because of my neck injuries and all the other stuff. I have to have a backpack and there's a lot of them that don't have that, that support on the back. There's like a, um, I can't quite put my, there's padding, that, that goes against your back in the right way. And it's very good ergonomics and it doesn't feel like I'm being pulled on my neck or it's, it's, it's digging into my back. So you can see right there. Yeah. It has certain padding uh, that protects your, uh, protects your back. And it, it, it's not very, I mean, bad, if you have a heavy backpack, it's not going to be a hundred percent comfortable, but it's not right, uncomfortable right, right. Uh, for me to carry around for long periods of time. And I take the backpack everywhere I go. Like I said, the gym, the airport, traveling, even when I go on trips, like I went to Tampa, the Tampa Fanboy Expo, I had it with me the whole time. Uh, it's really actually like the the modern day fanny pack that I used to have back in the nineties. You used to re wait. Are there pictures of this uh, you with a no, fanny no pack? On? Let's move on. You know, uh, there's no pictures ever. You won't find any anything it. anywhere. What did you keep maybe, in there? Maybe some old nineties stuff. Not possibly. Listen, that was useful. The fanny packs were useful. They were very very useful. Especially, I'm a big soccer short guy, and I never had pockets or anything. So right, right, I didn't have right. a choice. All right, we're going to go to the like, uh, we call it quick hits right now, but pretty much going to give you an update on a couple of things and a, and a quick review. The first one being, there's an app. When VLC left the App Store, which now it's come back, uh, I was very sad. I never downloaded it. Uh, but if you had a bunch of different video formats with VLC, you were able to use AVIs, MKVs, all different file types, which call my, I'm sure Suncast and Andrew have on our computers. Now, uh, our, one of our friends from the uh, ATV Flash app, you've heard us talk about uh, James and his company uh, with uh, FireCore. Uh, ATV Flash is still a great way to jailbreak your Apple TV, but he came out with an iOS app called Infuse, which basically worked along the lines of VLC, where you can use any video uh, video source or video type and put it on your iPad or your iPhone. And it would actually give you really neat cover art information on the, um, on the uh, movie or TV show. It says right here, MKV, MP4, M4V, AVI, and more. Uh, but this 1.3 update that we're going to talk about right now, there's the Dark Knight Rises. Uh, this was one, uh, he did that for me, by the way, Colm, put Dark Knight he Rises. Did? Yes, he did. Amazing. He told me that. But um, this update brings a huge upgrade to Infuse. Do you want to guess what it is? What is it? Airplay. <sighs> Genius. And it's something he was working on. I had the beta. I was, I was trying it out. It worked very well. So the official 1.3 release has uh, stream videos at a big screen using Airplay, transfer videos using a standard web browser, no iTunes required. That's interesting. Now, is this a, an air video replacement? Is it an air video replacement? I know, but if if I want to throw, if I say I, I, I end up getting an AVI file and I want to throw it on my iPad, I don't okay. have to buy now that adapter, the adapter that's 29 bucks now that I can't use the 30 pin to HDMI. Now I can just lay it back and I can air play it to the Apple TV with no problem. Oh, so you wouldn't have to go to handbrake either. No, you don't it. have... This takes out the step of converting the video. Gotcha. So in our words, if you're downloading a ton of AVI files, which tend to be a little bit smaller sometimes than the uh, the MP4 files that iTunes uses. Uh, mm -hmm. If you use that, you can put it on there and do it that way. So, so this is I an like internal Air Video type app in your network. 
This is a lo localized. Yeah, if you have a local, like basically on your iPad drive, gotcha. it, it'll airplay from that. Oh, um, on your oh, you can actually put the file on the computer on the iPad. Yeah, what you do is you go into the app section on your iTunes. And right. you can add it just like when you add PDFs oh, and stuff. Oh, I get it now. I That's get what it. you do. Now check yeah, this because, out. Yeah, because you know what? This would be very useful for me because I have um, family members that go on trips all the time, and they're always like, "Can you put a movie on on my uh, iPad?" And then I'm like, "Okay, you pick out the ones you want. Then I have to go put them all on the handbrake, make sure they all are converted, to then put them over." This eliminates that step. You want me to blow your mind some more? Because I didn't even read. Yes. I just stopped at AirPlay. <laughs> Check these out. And I'm, I'm serious. This is really, really cool. And a direct, this, 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 this plus the airplay makes a Trump VLC, in my opinion, which is back in the app store. So you can try both. Uh, enjoy videos when enhanced mobile surround sound powered by Dolby. That's not it. Here we go. Download and add subtitles with ease. Oh, that's cool. Scrabble plays and post ratings, comments to tracks.tv. That's fine. That's easy. Mm -hmm. Here's where this is. This is the Trump card right here. Add videos from Dropbox, Google Drive, iTunes, email attachments, and more. So basically, you can try to... I don't know if you can do a local on the iPad, but you can add them from different sources outside of iTunes, including a web browser, Dropbox, Google wow. Drive, I, and also email attachments. We'll have to try that. Yeah. Because if that bad. has it, that means you could access the content anywhere if it's on the Dropbox. Yeah, I wonder if you can open... Yeah, Dropbox, if you access it on your iPad and it says open in, mm -hmm. my guess is Infuse would be one of those apps and it'll bring it into Infuse. Exactly, right. That's it's what I hope at least. All right, so that's four ninety nine in the App Store. I think it's a good price to pay and this is somebody who has a great track record for updating the apps yes. like ATP Flash. He has a great record for that. Uh, so check it out. Go to their site there and check out the uh, press release and all the, the details and the change log. But go to the App Store, try it out. All right, the next one is a uh, very popular, probably the first uh, like viral app in the App Store, I would think. People that wanted to save on their text messaging and their SMS, SMS cost. Uh, WhatsApp was a, great, was a great solution for that. And now they've added audio features, Calm. I, I've used WhatsApp with people I know internationally, and it's turned out to be a great resource for people that don't want to they don't want to download Skype and don't want to get very technical. They just want a, a text message replacement. And mm -hmm. WhatsApp for 99 cents annually uh, is not a bad uh, deal. And now you have unlimited voice messages uh, with the update. And it, it already it already works very, very well for me. So have you tried it? You know what? I have not. And the, it's weird because I was, I was just having a conversation with someone about this the other day. Is that I was thinking he, we were talking about how the, the different ways you get in touch with someone, right? Obviously, phone and email are one and two. I'm in, I guess, in the business world. And then after that, it's like Twitter, Facebook. I mean, Skype, all these different ways all can reach me. And then you have an app like this that then could maybe be the one to just be the one place where you can reach. I feel like the way you communicate and you contact people in the future, it's going to change dramatically. I can almost feel like email is like sort of like just still trying to hold on, but it just feels so dated when I'm using an email. Is that weird to say that? Yeah, not weird, but you're right. It is a, um, yeah, but there's going to be different things, especially for legal reasons <laughs> that you right. want to still communicate via email. It's all being stored anyway, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, I mean, right. you, you mentioned Facebook Messenger, uh, and they added something to the iPhone uh, they yep. added Instagram sharing. And now, you know, I've tried to recover my Instagram account, call them, but I can. I'm right. <laughs> I when they were selling, they, 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 right. they said they could sell your pictures. Uh, I, I can't get it back. So I haven't used Instagram in so long. Uh, but this is a nice little feature to be able to share stuff like this. Uh, I'm a big fan of push cane, pushing the kitten. Have you seen those? Uh, if you go back to the story, there are Suncast. If you go back to it, you know, I don't that care that about don't anything with cats or kittens. So there's zero chance I've ever heard of All this. Right. Well, then you should download it. See it right there. The, the cat with the donut. It has a little, yeah, little animation too. What does he uh, do? I, it is cute. I like He's it. like a modern Garfield. Is that the gimmick? Yeah. Yeah. They, they make a lot of money with that. It looks like my cat, Boo Bear. But, uh, you know, adding the Instagram sharing. Have you tried to use this yet? 
No, uh, no, not when did they come out? Uh, it was to, from today. This is version two point six. It said uh, you can send photos and, and emoticons. Tap the I'm paper. I'm kind of clip. off Instagram Next. though. You're off too. No, I mean no. I, it's just that I feel like. How do I really need to add a filter to my photo every time I shoot it? Like there was a time where I was so into that. Now I'd rather just have the original photo, which I can then use another app to change if I wanted to later on. Yeah. yeah. Now I have the Facebook app and I use the uh, the push king uh, or the pushing, I should say, uh, kitty thing uh, right in the messages right there. But this this is for Facebook Messenger. I wonder if you're allowed or you're able to use the version 2.6 uh, features in the regular Facebook app. I don't know what you mean. I think what it does is it accesses your Instagram. So if you want to share the picture individually, you can do that. Not take a picture, filter it, and then send it. I think it's oh, oh. connected to your Instagram account since Facebook owns Instagram. So I think that's what it is. Gotcha. Not sure. Um, we don't have them up here on the show notes, but we're going to go to our Netflix picks of the week. Oh God. And uh, this is brought to you by Netflix.com forward slash GFQ. You can try Netflix uh, for 30 days. As a matter of fact, Karen was talking to her friend on the phone. She wanted to watch Breaking Bad. And I think the final season is currently airing or coming up uh, soon. And the first five seasons are on Netflix right now. So I told her, why don't you just get Netflix? They eight bucks a month to stream. And she was like, well... She doesn't know if she'd like it or if she can use a Roku because I told her to get a Roku because it's like 60 bucks and it's simple for anyone to use. And I said, well, why don't you just go to Netflix.com forward slash GFQ and try it for 30 days? Maybe you can finish the five seasons in 30 days and then cancel. But you're not going to because I guarantee she's going to find a ton of other stuff uh, to, to watch on there. And they keep growing with original content like Orange is the New Black, uh, The House of Cards. Did I get that right? House of Cards. And mm -hmm. uh, also Hemlock Grove. Uh, the Avengers is up there. I've watched that about six times since you, you picked it. And, of course, I go to my all-time favorite, uh, Batman Under Red Hood and Justice League Unlimited. But Breaking Bad, I started watching that. And I like it for the most part. But it does have, we talked off air, it does have those parts where it drags a little bit. And it goes a little bit too long in each scene. But I like the concept. You do like the concept. I kind of do. I mean, it, I mean, it's good. It's a. I mean, is this a spoiler? It's a family. The one guy, he had, they have a disabled son. Uh, money's tight. He finds out he's sick. He says, "I got nothing to lose. I'm going to start uh, cooking meth." He has lung cancer. Family fun figured, for everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has lung cancer, and he, he just figures that he's going to leave his family with money. And I, I haven't gotten even. It kind of. It kind of. He kind of. He kind of gets away from it and then kind of comes back to it. This situation is always changing. And, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting to see, to see this guy from suburban uh, Albuquerque or wherever he lives. Uh, you know, he's a high school chemistry teacher and then getting right. involved with all these people that, you know, are very dangerous, bad people. So and also becoming, you know, a badass himself and doing things that he would not normally do. Right. He's monster man at times. He is? Like yeah, oh, yeah. He, he I, I watched the whole, maybe the first two seasons, and then I was just like, eh. Same thing over and over and over again yeah. kind of thing. But yeah. people love that show, so who am I? Yeah. No. What do you got? You have anything I got that? since football season is just weeks away. I mean, the Redskins play tomorrow night, first preseason game. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going with a show I love, Michael, and I highly recommend to you is The League. And The League is now on Netflix streaming. Uh People had told me about this show for so long. I finally got into it uh, last year, and I'm totally addicted. They're up to uh, four seasons now. I believe there are three on on Netflix, but they are up to the fourth. Um, check it out, The League. I'll, but how do you check it out, Michael? You got to use the, the code. Netflix.com for slash GFQ. Hey, I saw it said uh, semi-reality. What is it? Kind of like uh, it looks like it's it's film like The Office type of thing. That's what that means, I think. Oh, okay. I was just in. yeah. Netflix.com forward slash GFQ thirty days free. I'm gonna actually add that to my instant queue since I'm a huge football. It's fan. football, yeah. And they have like cameos from like players during like always the first and last uh, episodes. But that but what's good about the comedy and this is what I like about TV shows is they have so many callbacks. Like you'll see an item that was in the second episode and they won't even refer to it to like seven episodes later. But then you remember about that and it's hilarious. Is that how comedy works? Yeah. 
What's that? Can you hear me? Yes. No, I was trying to make a joke. Didn't work. Oh, I didn't even hear you. That's why. Because <laughs> as we were going through our pro wrestling tees dot com uh, spot. For Stevie Richards and T4 show store, that the site's being, it's uh, going to a new server right now. So, once again, 3% has struck us, even our t shirt store. But if you go to prowrestlingtees.com forward slash Stevie Richards, you'll be able to get shirts like this Critical Strike one, which is quickly becoming a very popular, uh, popular shirt. So, you can hashtag Critical Strike, which has never been trending, but it's nice to have it on a t shirt. And you can see who I'm giving a kick to. And he's, not very happy about that. Who is that? Okay. Who is that? That's Taz. It is. Yeah. How, you, you like to kick him in the face, right? I. It just turned out that way, and I ended, yeah. up, ended up getting a good shot of it, a good screenshot, right, and gave it to you. Jay Maverick Design designs all the T-shirts on ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash Stevie Richards, but also you can go forward slash T4, and you can get the shirts like the T4 show with our Twitter stuff. If, if you've seen my pictures on Facebook – at the Fanboy Expo in London Comic Con, you can see that shirt. It's a very nice shirt in the GFQ colors, too, with blue and orange. Yep. So really nice stuff. So that's about it. Andrew didn't come back, did he? Still drinking. What, yep. the voice of God? Yeah, where is he? Not around. He's always I mean, You know there. what happened is he, he had a couple drinks, and then he probably fell asleep. Is that his move? At 3 yeah. o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. Yeah, because he, he can't hold his liquor anymore. As soon as he has a couple of drinks, he just falls asleep for whatever reason. It's good to know we got a guy like that up at the helm. Directing. <laughs> it. That's right. really makes me feel good about the move of GFQ. <laughs> really? That's okay. We find someone to drink more than you, We, we can go start our own I, I don't drink anymore. I've, I've got to you, you stopped. You're going to start DDP yoga, too. I know. I don't drink ever. It's like weird. I, oh, no, that's not true. I drink Mike's Hard Lemonade. Does that count anymore? Yes, it does. It absolutely counts. I like that. So like this is episode number 153. You can, uh, the show will be uh, hopefully up as soon as I'm done the show notes. And uh, it's August 7, 2013. You can follow me at Michael Manna. You can follow him at Culmination and at Homeowner Colm. And you can follow Suncast at Suncast with a K. And you can also have an intervention with Andrew Zarian on Twitter by doing <laughs> at Andrew Zarian or at GFQ Network and tell him that he needs help desperately. So, but for now, for everybody here at T4 Show, thank you and best of luck in all your future recovery endeavors. <laughs>